Hello and welcome to the second episode in the special series that I'm running on the Your Next Chapter podcast at the moment, all about your circle of support. Now, a circle of support is, as the name suggests, it is the circle that surrounds you that you have consciously created to keep you buoyant in business and life. Now, I've found with these conversations with myself and also with these lovely wholehearted women, that falls into four areas, the physical, emotional, spiritual, the mindset and mentoring, and the connection and community. And each of the women that I'm chatting with over the next few weeks is giving us an insight into the pieces, the pieces in her own puzzle of support that keeps her buoyant. And today the gorgeous Sarah Tovey is speaking with us. Now Sarah is a relationship marketing mentor and a visual marketing specialist. She's got a huge portfolio of marketing and sales strategy background where she worked in corporate land like so many of us did before the kids came along. Now she actually had three children under the age of two and a half, which included a set of twins, when she realized that I think I need to move out of corporate world and actually give myself some space and time here. But like so many of us next chapter women, she had that burning desire that just would not go away, that there was more she wanted to contribute. So she did what many of us do, taking those skills from corporate land and turning them into a consultancy that she ran from 2007. Now, Things go along here pretty well. It's it's a story that I absolutely relate to because I too started my small business consultancy back in 2003. But what Sarah discovered over time that there was a missing link in marketing and that was relationship marketing, that real power of connection to your most aligned client, that real authentic client connection. So Sarah has, has pulled together this beautiful mix of skills where she's amazingly creative and was an early adopter of Canva, which is a way of pulling together uh, visual marketing, which a tool that you may or may not be aware of, but definitely worth checking out. So Sarah combined her passion for these all these different other fa- facets of marketing, and she launched her business, which is called Your Relationship Marketing Mentor. And she loves working with women in business who really want that authentic marketing connection and strategies that do build profitable and meaningful businesses, but very much from the heart. So that combination of authenticity and skills put together into this amazing blend. So I've known Sarah for for quite some time. She's a member in my own Next Chapter Success Circles in my masterminds. And it was really interesting to dive deeper below the surface because I thought I knew Sarah pretty well. But as with so many of the gorgeous guests who come on this podcast, she really opened herself and shared the background that that has led her to this next chapter. Or as she said, I think I've had a whole heap of chapters since I first left corporate land way back when. So settle in, get perhaps a pen and paper because I hope that you will find inspiration in this conversation that will help you further build and develop your own circle of support, which is so, so important to keep yourself buoyant as you move forward and shine in your own next chapter. I hope you enjoy the chat. Inspiration, clarity, confidence, and wholehearted business strategy. Welcome to Your Next Chapter, the podcast especially for women in their 40s and beyond who know that business and personal development go hand in hand. Tune in each week for marketing, mindset, and personal growth strategies, along with inspiring stories from women around the world who are creating new businesses and lives that are personally fulfilling and financially rewarding. If you're looking to create a business and life you love, you're in great company. Let's find out what will unfold in your next chapter. I'm your host, Angela Raspis, and I'm so delighted that you're here. Hello there, this is Angela Raspis and welcome to episode 64 of the Your Next Chapter podcast where we're diving into the series of the Circle of Support. And I'm very, very excited to have the delightful Sarah Tovey here with us today to have a conversation about her Circle of Support. Sarah is been a participant in my own Next Chapter Success Circle Masterminds over the last couple of years and our history goes back even further than that and she is just a wonderful person to work with and I'm really excited for her to be able to share with you the type of business that she has developed over that time that we've spent together and how her talents are pulling together into this quite amazing concept that is already changing a lot of entrepreneurs and the way that they turn up visually online. But I'm, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. That's not my job. It's to introduce you to Sarah. So Sarah, thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Thank you, Angela, for inviting me. 
we're going to have fun, I guarantee it. The way, I, <laughs> the way I love to start these conversations, Sarah, is to really open that question to you. How has your next chapter begun? What's the story behind where you are now and how you got there? Well, it's interesting, Angela. I've just been sitting down writing a little bit of a timeline um, to wrap my head around how my next chapter business has evolved. And uh, I think in the past uh, 13 years or so, I've probably had a few chapters come and go. Um, but I guess that's part of the journey that uh, gets us to where we are today. But, um, you know, like so many people, uh, I left my corporate career um, after having kids. I had my daughter back in 2004 and uh, continued to work in my corporate role and uh, my husband uh, took 12 months off to look after her while I continued to work and then I fell pregnant with twins and so uh, you know at when they were born in 2006 I had three kids under two and a half so there was oh no goodness. choice <laughs> Yeah, so with no family, um, I was living in Melbourne having grown up in Sydney. So um, I really did have to make the choice to leave my corporate um, career because I knew that uh, my husband was travelling a lot with his job and there's no way we could have sustained two, you know, full-on corporate roles. And so I made that decision to leave, which was really difficult for me. Uh, it's taken me many, many years to let go of that um, identity that was attached to my corporate career, um, which I know so many people go through. But it literally has taken me years to... Um, realize that there's more to that identity and um, you know that's just come I guess with a bit more wisdom and experience of life but um, yeah it was really sad for me to leave but uh, yeah so I you know looked after the kids for um, you know as a full-time mum for a couple of years but it didn't take me long I started a consultancy business quite quickly uh, after leaving corporate and uh, you know I sort of you know my background was sales and marketing and so I sort of naturally started working with small businesses around their marketing, development of websites, social media, that type of thing. Um, and so it, it really did evolve naturally and organically with no real intention. I did sort of slip into that business. But it didn't fulfil me. Um, it didn't give me what I was looking for. So I continued along that journey as the kids grew up and um, things really changed for me back in 2014 and uh, that was the turning point. My marriage ended and, uh, you know, I was looking for something more in life and in my business and so that's when I feel like I really stepped into my next chapter business. Um, it's, yeah. Oh, it's that um that trajectory of what I'm what I'm hearing from you. There's such I mean, I already knew this, but it's highlighted more so the similarities between our backgrounds with my sales and marketing background as well. And yeah, started a consultancy when well actually the first business was um in real estate. I created gift bags for real estate agents to give to people when they moved into new homes. And little Miss Charlotte used to come with me in the in the Gary Cot, you know, used to hold pull her out of the car and take her into real estate agents. Personally, I think um she was the thing that actually got many of the sales across the line because she was so cute but um, then I went into it you know and, and grew my own marketing business into an agency because we do the things that we know as she said you had that corporate identity and it took a while to sort of shake that off but you've always had that entrepreneurial streak because starting a consultancy not everybody does that when they have small children by the way so that entrepreneurial streak was was always there in you but that feeling that you had of which we often do, we, we take the skills from corporate world and we go, well, I'll turn these into a business. And consulting is, is quite often the first port of call. But you said it didn't feel great. It wasn't fulfilling. What, what was going on there? Um, I think because I was going through so much turmoil in my own life, um, you know, stepping away from my marriage, it was something that I chose to do because I just, my life wasn't fulfilled in so many aspects and um, and certainly the business was a huge part of that. And I did sort of, you know, step away from 
a consultancy business because I just felt like I was just, um, you know, doing the work for my clients and I really enjoyed it. But like you, Angela, there was something big missing. And mm. um, so the first sort of step from that was I was about to launch a business called Spark Your Light back in uh, 2015. So I'd gotten over the, the big change in life and I was stepping more into... Um, I guess tapping into my own intuition and and exploring the greater realm realm of spirituality and you know this whole concept of uh, marketing and there's something greater inside of you that you want to share with the world and how I was going to help other businesses do that and so I started looking at that um, and I was ready to launch this business back in that time and then I was introduced to a different business model which was a network marketing business back in uh, February of 2015 and it was uh, called Send Out Cards and it was all about relationship marketing and I think I fell very easily into that world because I was really craving community and connection. Um, mm. you know because so much had happened in my life I just wanted to be around people and I was nervous about um, creating a business that was going to give me all of that I think I just saw this as an easy answer to be able to incorporate into my world of marketing this concept of relationship marketing because you know in today's world you know everything's happening at such a fast pace and uh, we live in such a noisy world with social media and everything that's going on I really felt that there was a missing link in terms of connection with people and their clients and so I headed down the path of relationship marketing using a tool called send out cards um, but again you know over time there still was this little yearning inside of me going no Sarah you're not quite right this isn't exactly where you should be going and it's very easy to squish that feeling down but it kept resurfacing so uh, earlier this year I relaunched my business your relationship marketing mentor mark two after launching it back in 2016 and um yeah i just felt that that you know re i guess putting a line in the sand and saying this is what's going to happen but i did that but i still really didn't know what services i was going to offer i mean it's quite weird i just sort of went with the flow and it's really only been in the last couple of months that i felt like i've stepped into where I really want to go in the future. So it is a new chapter for sure. And isn't that interesting feeling that, that permission almost that you gave yourself to, that feeling that kept resurfacing, that little thing that kept tapping you on the shoulder and going, you know, you're getting closer but you're not quite there yet. I think it's that openness to listen to that and to allow yourself to keep evolving and not punishing yourself in any way with, I didn't get it right again, I've got to change again. It's a message I want everybody to hear that, and I've said this a lot, this is an evolution, it's not a revolution. My own business from you know, back in 2003 to now, it has continually evolved, but there's always that central core that stays in common across, I believe, across all the businesses and you continue to refine it until you're really, you know, sitting on the mark. In, in your case, from what I've seen, it's that ability, that relationship marketing part of knowing how to help people connect with their audiences. And in this incarnation, there's a lot of the visual side going on, but also the copy as well. And that has been constant across everything you've been doing. It's being able to connect with, help a client connect with an audience. And with Send Out Cards, there was that support thing too there I can see why that was appealing and that feeling of community that you said community and where's the other word and connection that those two pieces were were so so important to you and that makes perfect sense it and that feeds nicely into the concept of the support circle which I think every woman or man needs but in particular if you're working in the entrepreneurial space it can be quite isolating quite lonely we're often working at home alone in our wee offices and having a circle of support is so important so I introduced the idea that it's different for everyone it's a unique recipe unique ingredients but it often falls into four quadrants and I'd love us to start you know looking at how these turn out for you so those quadrants are physical so how do we take care of ourselves physically then there's emotionally and spiritually there's community and connection those same words that you use and then there's mindset and mentoring so 
do those quadrants um, relate to you? Can do, do you feel that they are the different areas where you look for creating your own support circle? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. I mean, I've you know we've been together working uh, in your uh, circles since you know this is where well, I'm in my second year now, and you know especially since you know ending my marriage, I have had to create. A team a support team for myself so you know I have you as my you know business uh, coach and I have some other coaches that help me in different aspects of my life I have my beautiful cleaner who comes and helps me around the house because you know unless my house is beautiful and clean I can't work from home and feel productive and um, so yes I have created a circle of support around myself to help me be the best person I can be. I have my own personal trainer that I work with in terms of the physical sense um, and so this team means the world to me. It's what's going to make me successful in the long run because I know I can't do it on my own and it's and taken me a long time to realise that. Oh, that's a big admission for so many, isn't it? For so many yeah. of us is that that feeling of responsibility, the feeling of I can do this and I should be doing this and I should be juggling all those balls in the air at once. And I think that's one of the gifts of um, of getting a little older is that you get a little wiser and you realise that not only do you not need to, it's actually better for all concerned if we don't. A, for our own energy, but there's also the other piece. When you talked about the cleaner there for a moment, and then I'm going to come back to each of the quadrants, but I have a cleaner as well. And oh my goodness, that's, I love it. There is nothing better than walking back into my home and everything looking and smelling fantastic. But the piece that's here that I think it's important for us to note as well is that in an economy, money needs to flow so that by you actually outsourcing the cleaning to someone, you are then passing on money to someone who will then use that money to buy somebody else's services or products in different ways. So if we try and stop that flow, we can actually stop the abundance flowing back to us as well. So that was shared with me once and it made, it made perfect sense rather than holding on to the money it was allowing it to join the flow because it needs to be a river not a pond so I hand over my money with great joy to my cleaner for that reason and all for the reason I also love my having my, my beautiful clean house so thank you for highlighting the cleaner that's one that hasn't been on the list in the interview so far but that's a goodie so no, yeah. yeah no I was just going to say I, I think it's important that we you know, we do have to invest in these areas of our life. It's an investment that is, you know, part of our growth and development. And whether it be a cleaner or, you know, a personal trainer or a business coach, you know, I happily invest that money in myself knowing that the rewards are going to be so much greater. That's a key one. It's investing in ourselves. And one of the things that I've certainly seen is a maturing in women's understanding of our deservedness to have that investment. We often, especially if we um, have other dependents, we hardly think twice about taking care of others, but that need to turn around and take care of ourselves and to spend on ourselves with money, but also with time and energy is really, really important. So, so let's look yeah. at the quadrants then. The, the physical side, you mentioned a personal trainer. Talk, talk to me about the different ways in which you take care of yourself physically around that and, and other areas as well. Well, I sort of realised, you know, earlier this year that physically if I wanted to be able to sustain my energy, you know, having to pretty much um, bring up three children on my own, um, it's hard work. It's physically and mentally draining. And so you have to conserve that energy. And so physically I knew that I wanted to um, create more energy and vitality in my life. And, you know, I was you know, lucky enough to come across a, a local transformational coach. So it's more than just a personal trainer. She's, you know, she covers that mindset and it looks at the habits of why you've gotten to where you are over, you know, 40 odd years. And so um, I love going to my training sessions with her. There's always usually a group of four of us and we're often all in a business as well. So it's like we, we do our weights, but we also talk about, you know, marketing and social media and different aspects of our business in between so again it's that sense of community I'm not just going to a gym not knowing anyone I'm going being supported and and cheered on by a group of women who are all wanting to better themselves so it's such a great uh, I've absolutely loved working with her Oh my goodness, that sounds like um, a bit of a, a message for me there I've got this terrible um, pattern of joining gyms 
and then realizing yeah. that you've actually got to go for them to have any impact on you. And I think you've just hit the nail on the head that there is a lack of community there. There's a lack of connection. Yeah. I'm a pretty self-motivated person. You know, when the things that I'm working on are high on my values, I'll get stuff done. But I just keep hitting that wall when it comes to the physicality. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm playing around. I love soccer. So that's a team environment. And a girlfriend has invited me to come along to um, Pilates or Reformer Pilates. So I get to go with her. So I feel really happy about that. But there's the clue. That's why I don't go to the gym because I go alone. It sounds like you've got a great, a great um, solution to that. Yeah, I'm really lucky to have found her. Absolutely. And, um, but you're right. It's, you, you've, there's only so much you can do on your own. You do need to have someone, you know, drag you along to go for a walk or to go to a class. <laughs> so, yes. So, yeah. There's um, a writer, Gretchen Rubin, who wrote The Happiness Project and yep. another one of um, the women in one of the circles, uh, a different one to the one that you're in, uh, encouraged us to sort of do this quiz. We found out what, almost like what character type do we fall into and one of them was the one that that I've fallen into is, oh, what's the name of it? It's an obliger. So it means that I am really, really good at getting things done for other people and really not so good at getting things done for myself. And um, it was really, really interesting. We quizzed and gave you some, some good insights. And for an obliger, exactly what you have just suggested is that by getting involved with other people, you're obliged to go and, and get to your classes because there's other people there that you would otherwise let down. I think I'm getting a bit of insight here. Some action needs to be taken. <laughs> yeah, but also too, she certainly, um, she, there's that sense of accountability too. You know, mm. like we work together and there's a sense of accountability. We have goals that we set each, um, you know, term. We have a block and we, so we set our goals and, and we have to turn in certain, you know, food diaries or whatever it is, but there's that sense of accountability and I know that I need that. I just do and, I, and it's through that accountability that I stretch and grow. So, yeah, it's, it's working really well. And that's awareness of self, aware, being aware of what it is that works for you in terms of your style and then creating your support in that mold so that it's going to work effectively for you. Another benefit of getting older and wiser, I reckon. And how about other areas of physicality, like um, how about practitioners or other areas in which you may support yourself physically? Is there other things that are important to you? Uh, look, I've, I've thought about, you know, seeing a kinesiologist or something like that. I haven't gone down that route yet. Um, it's something that I would like to do. I do have a remedial massa, uh, massage therapist that I work with closely as well. So I had a back injury uh, from when I was in my late teens. And so I've always had to manage that uh, carefully. So I have a chiropractor that I see very regularly and things like that. So um, it's, it's through that uh, maintenance that I sustain it and, and it doesn't get, you know, it's manageable. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's where I'm at probably through practitioners. Oh, fantastic. Well, so once we take care of or at the same time that we take care of ourselves physically, another quadrant which is so important is the, the emotional stroke of spiritual side of things in terms of how you keep yourself buoyant within that area. So what does that look like for you? How do you take care of your emotions and your spirit? It's interesting. I grew up as a Catholic and, you know, went to a Catholic primary school and high school and I've always had a real interest in, in that aspect of my life. And, you know, I succinctly remember in high school going to a retreat and just that joy of, you know, meditation and that there was something greater than, than myself. But I've often steered away from it. And, you know, I don't fit into the normal religion as such. And, and so, therefore, there was that element of confusion. And it's only been probably in the last 10 years or not even 10 years that I've really tapped into the spiritual side of my life. And it was actually I met a clairvoyant back, in, um, you know, back in probably 2003. 13, 14, and that's how I actually discovered you, Angela, was through, I went to a um, networking event with Maria Davis, and I think she was running them for yourself through your business, and so that's how 
I discovered your world. And so it was through this clairvoyant that my friend said to me, a, a, you know, a fellow mum from primary school said to me, well, come and meet this clairvoyant and have a reading. And I'm like, oh, no, there's no way I want to have a reading. I really don't want to do that. And, you know, within, I stepped into the room and the first thing she said to me is, you're not very happy in your marriage, are you? And I was like, whoa, that is just whoa. too much for me. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, she did open Pandora's box for me and that key was unlocked. And, yeah, so I worked very closely with her for a long time. So she opened my eyes and world up to this, all these other possibilities. And, and it was through working with her that I was able to, you know, take different steps in my life. And I've been fascinated with the greater spiritual realm and... Um, the deeper I get into it, the more support I get from it, I guess I can say. And I know that as soon as I step back, my life you know, becomes a little unsteady and I just need to ground myself and then I'm back on track. So the spiritual and um, uh, emotional side of me is very important. And unless I get that foundation right, the rest of it won't work. Mm. I think um, what what I'm hearing and and I've I've seen a lot is the concept of spiritual curiosity. I think it doesn't matter what our backgrounds are. Like you were brought up Catholic, I wasn't brought up with anything where I was in New Zealand. But I start to explore what spirituality looks like to me. There's an expression um, spiritual but not religious, which comes up a lot for women in their next chapters who are looking at what does it mean to feel emotionally and spiritually supported, and that can be as, as you've explored you know the clairvoyant side and and I guess that that answer there is that there's more that's not seen that could be possible I mean we just can't explain some stuff and that was quite as you said Pandora's box when you walked in the door and and she identified or tapped into your energy straight away of where your unhappiness was and it took a I'd have to say a, a lot of courage as it does with any woman that I've spoken to friends and and clients and other interviewees who have stepped away from a marriage that takes a heck of a lot of courage it must have been um especially when you've got young children it must have been quite a scary time but you've found other ways in which you can get those those emotions and that spirit filled up again yeah i think you know it's interesting having come through the other side and you can see you, know, you see other people who you know are having struggles but you know they won't leave they won't the risk is too great but the freedom that came with that decision yes it was horrific but you know my ex my ex-husband and I are great friends and you know it's very amicable the kids can see that the relationships with that the kids have with their father is just so much greater now and so um you know it was the right decision to make even though it was you know so difficult um but you know, it's that I, the, the biggest thing that I've learned when it comes to all of these things is just trusting in myself to make the right decision and, and tapping into that inner wisdom. And I know that as soon as I do, the right answers are always there in front of me. Um, and I'm just so grateful that I've become aware of that ability to be able to do that, that it's there inside of us. We just need to, to trust and, and to let it come out. And allow ourselves the space to actually let it come out, to be able to hear it, because we sometimes are so incredibly busy with everything that we're doing. If we don't pause, and I actually spoke in the episode before this one about the power of the pause, of actually giving you space to, to listen and to respond ra rather than react. So I think a huge part of our journey into our next chapters, business and life, is learning to trust ourselves. I think you've absolutely nailed it with that one, Sarah. It's that we do have the answers. We may need assistance to close gaps but ultimately something resonates something feels true something feels right something we're drawn towards or something that as you said earlier that kept resurfacing if it keeps coming back again and again whatever that thought or opportunity is it's time to to turn around and tune into it isn't it absolutely and we just know as a body that you Feel, you just feel that dread or that, you know, you get sick or something happens and you know that you're not on the right path. But as soon as you do head in the right direction, it, you know, you just you get the energy and the vitality and you feel well and excited and happy. It's, it's, it's amazing how that works. But I've, I've really noticed that over the last, you know, if I look back at 10 years of my next chapter businesses, I know as soon as I and steering off the right, right course, I do get that real physical sensation in my body that this is not right. 
Oh, that's um, and I, lo I love that recognition of that. There was a gorgeous woman I spoke to quite a while ago now on one of my tally summits that I ran. Her name is Tamara, Tamara Roth, and she talked about how she tunes into the body barometer. I thought that was yeah. the perfect description, isn't it? You just get still yeah. and like, yeah, you, you're going to feel it. And it's learning to trust that feeling. I actually was going along to um, study intuition earlier this year. And that was the whole concept that they taught us is that intuition is, it's not psychic ability. Intuition is about tuning inwards and actually listening to what your body is telling you. And we've all got it. And even if we, we just take little baby steps in at first and just trust your intuition, even with what you're going to wear today, but then you can go on to bigger and bigger um, information downloads that you get through your intuition. And it's that, you know, that gut feeling that we all have. So yeah, learning to trust it more, I think is just such an enormous part of our journey. So I'm delighted that you've shared that, that insight with us. And that, that brings us around to another thing that you mentioned earlier, another quadrant that I believe is so vital in your support circle is community and connection. So you know, with me, that's definitely um, the groups that I'm in, the mastermind that I'm in, but also friends and family and taking the effort to prioritize those type of relationships. But what does community and connection look like for you? For me, um, I think the thing that I've come to realize probably more recently is first step is connection, um, is having that connection with myself first to be able to do anything. And so until I have that connection with myself, I'm not able to connect fully with others. And uh, this, you know, it's really been in the last few months that I've come to realise that. So, you know, getting like we've just talked about, tapping into the intuition and really connecting deep within myself and trusting myself, I've been able to forge far greater, uh, deeper relationships with others. And so for community and connection, the big thing for me is that it's something bigger than myself. So yes, it starts with me, but then I'm after something that's far greater than myself. And so that's where I've made sure that I have that support network with different aspects of my life so that I do have that um, big sense of community. And, you know, I come from a, I'm the eldest of four kids and we've just spent the weekend away together. So, you know, there's 11 grandchildren, you know, there's a whole lot of us. And so that having been brought up in a big family, you know, that it's important for me to have that around me. And so that's why I've seeked other, you know, other communities and then your next chapter community is a big part of that for me uh, especially when it comes to my business. Uh, that's um, one of the things that that I feel when I'm listening to your description there and this is always really important to note when you're listening to somebody what it triggers in you often shows where action is needed so I moved to Australia in 1988 I came for three months and I'm still here and my, my husband's English and he came here in 1978 and he's still here but we left our families those immediate families behind my this will make you laugh. I'm not Catholic, but we are Irish. Um, my grandparents from Ireland and my dad from a family of 13, a mum from a family of 11. So then a few mar uh, marriages and remarriages. So 48 uncles and aunties and goodness knows how many cousins. But we left them all behind. So much of my youth was spent in family you know, situations like visiting cousin after cousin. Actually, it was a bit tedious, I think, when I was a kid, but I appreciate it now. But that, that feeling of connection there was, or, or the disconnection when I was here in Australia and just feeling a little sad that my kids haven't had that same experience because, of course, Graham's family is in, Europe, is in, um, in England. And hearing you talk about and seeing your photos, because obviously we're connected on Facebook, of seeing the experiences you have with your family makes me feel a little, a little sad. Happy for you, a little sad for me. And that is a little bit of a trigger to make me realise that being in contact with my family, even if it can't be face-to-face, -face, because we're in different countries, is so important. So I think, um, yeah, our communities support us on different levels, but that's obviously something that I need to have a look at. But also, Angela, I think something that I realised this weekend is that even though they're your family, they're not necessarily the people that you've got that soul connection with. You know, I grew up always feeling a little bit like the black sheep, you know. Um, I left uh, when I was 21, I moved from Sydney to Melbourne and so being the eldest, the, the younger ones were still around and it was when I left that my parents split up as well and so they went through a whole aspect of life 
wasn't part of. And so um, I guess that's put a fracture a little bit in our relationship. So yes, they're my family and I love them dearly and you know they're one of the most important aspects of my life, but it's also made me realise that those friendships and connections that you have when, from other people are going to give you so much greater um, you know, sense of connection and support that, that your family may not give you. So, yes, I have these beautiful times where we get together as a whole, you know, once or twice a year, if that. But it's made me really value the friendships that I have, whether it be through the circle um, with the girls that I have working with you or, you know, the friends that I have who are the mums from my kids' primary school, you know, and the girls that I'm working out at the gym with, that they give me all a sense of fulfillment to not give me and and most importantly they get it you know working with yes. you girls you get the aspect they, they don't even ask me about my business and sometimes that hurts they're not that interested <laughs> to be honest <laughs> That's actually, that's a really good point that you make and I, and um, just bringing myself, like grounding myself in for a moment, that's one of the, the pieces of advice that I do share is the fact that your family who you sometimes would hope are the highest supporters of you in your business, in your new endeavours as you're stretching and, and creating something new or expanding into, into your next chapter, but you don't always get the, um, the support from there and sometimes, well, I think you definitely need different community um, versions because as you say, Saying that the girls at the gym, they're not going to ask you, so how's that opt-in going? Or how did you go on that last launch? Or how's that new service? Because they serve a different purpose. That's that recognition, I guess, for many communities that serve different purposes in your support circle. For me, I know a, a big one is me being a part of the recovery movement is that I have a second family there who really get me. So yeah, I think many communities that serve different purposes and being aware that they don't have to fulfill all needs, they have different places, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I think too, one of the one of the reasons that I decided to work with you in the your next chat next chapter circles was that I wanted to be around people who were a few steps ahead of myself so I wanted that modeling so that you know I could stretch and grow and, and be a better version of myself and so working with a, a group of women in business who are often sometimes a little bit ahead has been fantastic as well so I do put myself in communities where those people are too. Yeah, we always need to stretch and grow. We, um, and they're often called or way showers, people who are showing you what is possible so that you can step into a bigger version of you. I think that's a hugely important part of our communities, which actually then leads us beautifully into that, into that last piece of the quadrant, as I see it at the moment, the support in the mindset and mentoring area. Now, um, we've been touching on how you're a part of the circles, but I think a lot of people perhaps don't understand the, what a mastermind is. And as a business owner, you know, what's important about a mastermind? How does it help versus other forms of support? And so I'd love you to talk a little about what your experience is there because there are both informal and formal masterminds. We're not saying you need to you know, have a paid invested mastermind, but it certainly can, can help with that stretching aspect. So have a talk to us about what it means to you, how, it, how you see that it is an important part of your own support circle. Well, I think, uh, you know, we, I, I reached out to you back in the end of 2015 and, you know, I, I, I guess I was looking for some way to have work with you in terms of you being my business mentor or coach and I didn't really know much about what this mastermind um, program was or offer was. But what I didn't expect to happen was that um, emotional support and mindset support that was going to come from it. I was sort of thinking, oh, yes, I'll work with you and you'll sort of tell me a little bit what I have to do and keep me on check if I'm, you know, heading down the wrong path. But the unexpected benefit of being part of an intimate circle, because there's only four of us in a circle, so it's, it is small and intimate, is that emotional support and that trust and connection that came uh, as part of it and you know over the journey of the last 18 months as I said before it's I'm still you know um, navigating my way as to where I'm going to actually end up and focus on and you know there's at times where you know I've been in the on the calls in tears just not knowing what to do and everybody put things 
for me and um, provide that mindset rebalance, I guess, is sometimes what I needed. And I'll never forget, you know, recently when I was feeling, you know, I'm just recovering from the flu and I was ready to give everything up and go and get a job. And you just said, just sit on your hands and don't make any big decisions. <laughs> and that was such a big thing for me. And, um, you know, I think I will often say that to myself, just sit on your hands and not make any big decisions. Just let a bit of time pass. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think definitely the mindset thing has been massive because, you know, and, and one of the reasons that I'm so grateful of being part of uh, your ne next chapter is that um, I'm with women who are even a little bit older than me. So it's important for me to tap into that um, wisdom of people who have lived a little bit more than me. And I really appreciate that. Uh, you know, we've got somebody in our group who has, you know, is a sing was a single mum as well. So she went through that with her kids. And so she's been able to glean a lot of um you know, experience and insight into me. It will me navigate my way. And, you know, everyone's kids are a little bit older, so that makes it easier to ask questions. So all those benefits um, have been massive for me personally and, and they all go towards having a, a better mindset and a more positive mindset around my business. It's certainly a huge part, isn't it? I think um, you can look at two people with exactly the same sets of experiences and skills, for example, but the person who has that self-belief or at least has the support when you do have the down times, because I think that's the reality, is that some days, and I've said this on other episodes, I feel like I could leap tall buildings in a single bound. And then on other days, it's like, why did I even start this business? What the hell am I doing? This is so hard. And it's having, it's having that regularity of support that allows you to, to to bounce back up, to recognise that this too shall pass. And I, I'm a huge proponent of masterminds. I'm in one myself and I certainly, um, and which is why I've brought them into the core of my business because of the experience I've had about the emotional and the mindset support absolutely alongside the strategic advice and the marketing advice and all the other pieces that are a part of a good mastermind. But that emotional support, that connection, you're absolutely right. I had no idea the importance of that for me personally. I think sometimes we can pay a little bit of lip service to it, but when we're in the midst of it, we begin to realize how vital it is to have someone who's got our back who, or to have a, a little team around us of people who understand our foibles. It's been pointed out to me a few times that I'm rather hard on myself and I probably don't credit myself enough with the progress that I have made in business and life and tend to focus a little too easily on what I haven't done. Does that sound familiar at all? Yeah, it does. And I was just, yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking um, that it's so nice to work with people so closely and they're able to objectively see very clearly when um, certain things just need to be adjusted ever so slightly. And that just that one little adjustment can make such a big difference in how you see your business and how you operate it. The huge you know you talk about the confidence and it's just that building that confidence muscle and having people there to help build that every you know every fortnight or whenever you need has been really big for me because often that's the biggest thing that was for me you know when I was in my corporate role I was you know on an executive board you know under 30 in a very very male I worked in the hardware industry so I was the only female on the executive board and I was under 30 so you can imagine what that was like and I had so much confidence it was incredible but as soon as I had kids and I lost that my confidence just plummeted um, and so it's taken me you know nearly 12 years to get that confidence and self-belief again to know that I can do this that you know that I can have an amazing successful business and so being and part of the mastermind is giving me those little bits of encouragement um, to build up that self-belief and confidence has been really big. And what, what, what role do you see as confidence playing in skill development in terms of being able to, to tackle new things, to try new technologies, etc.? Because I think, especially in your business, you do have a lot of technical tools that you need to wrap your head and then help your clients wrap their heads around as well. So what part do you feel confidence plays in terms of business development in that respect? I, I don't, um, when it comes to technology, I don't have an issue around the confidence of that. I think 
you know, for many people, it's just often a fear that they need to overcome. And if anything, it's like, I'm just going to keep doing this until I work it out, no matter how long it takes me. Um, it's, I think the confidence piece for me was very much around the self-belief and self-worth, not so much in the tactical or practical sense. Um, but then on the flip side, I know that the technical side can cripple people and um, that it's just so overwhelming um, that it's almost just a barrier too big for them to break through. And I love the um, the advice that I've heard many times. Um, one of the trainings that I've done was with Dr. Ross Harris and with the ACT, Acceptance Commitment Training, as it's called. And he talks, talks very much about how the actions of confidence come first, the feelings of confidence come later. And I think that's a, a perspective that can be given to any situation, where it be running your first webinar, you're having your first sales conversation, you're tackling Canva for the first time, all of those things. You, if you can tackle it with a degree of, okay, I'm not comfortable, it's not easy, but I'm going to feel more confident once I build my competence. We don't wait for confidence. We create confidence by acting. Oh, absolutely. And I can just see that recently in just a, a wave of new clients that I've had that, you know, just having those few and breaking the, the ice per se, it's like, oh, this is, it's, it feels so different now because it's like, oh, I've done this. I've got evidence that I can do this. And so tapping and looking at that evidence has been really important for me to move forward going yes I can tackle Canva or I can tackle lead pages or you know things that I never thought I could possibly do and so that's all evidence towards me being able to do greater things in the future. Mm. Well I can definitely see just with the time and the time that we've spent together uh, the development both of your confidence but also your confidence and your clarity on and valuing your own skills, recognizing that what this is, because this is something that happens a lot, is that the things that come easiest to us, we discount. We don't necessarily think that they'll be valued in the marketplace when it comes to building a business. And I'm definitely seeing such a huge increase in you appreciating the difference that you can make in other people's businesses with the with the services that you do provide. So I, I don't know, I'm pulling out my crystal ball here. I'm pulling it out. My intuition is definitely singing at me at the moment that you you are on a path now with the new version of your business that's really going to flourish because it feels good, doesn't it, when you're doing the work? It does. It, it really, um, it just, it makes my heart sing it. It's, it's effortless. It's, you know, it's, it's not hard at all. And, and I think, you know, I am attracting the people that I want to work with. And, and it, it did, I did have to do and at this, you know, in the sand, when we had our retreat recently, we just went away for our annual retreat to the Southern Highlands. And I said to Angela while we were there, I have this feeling I just need to draw a line in the sand. And, and we physically did draw that line in the sand. <laughs> and, and I know that you said... Oh, you know, yeah. you're so good at doing visual marketing. Why, what, you know, I think you must have said it hundreds of times, but I'm not quite sure when it clicked for me. But it is. It's that things that sometimes you um, you complicate things, and you think, no, 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 I have to do it this way or do it that way. And and it's like, no, just you, you know, when you hit that, you've just got to look at your zone of genius and and really tap into it. And now that I have finally found that, and I'm still working my way around it, but you know, it, it, these are the gifts I was given to share with the world and, you know, I, I'm here to serve and, and this is, you know, this is how I'm going to do it. And it does feel very liberating to finally accept it. Uh, that is fantastic. I do remember us physically drawing that line in the sand. That was that was definitely a moment. And when, when you made that decision, you also inspired the other women who were there within the Mastermind Circle as well to draw their own lines in the sand, to make their own recommitments to themselves in different areas of their business and life. So you, you were definitely a, an inspirational role model that morning. I remember it very, very clearly. And we know for sure that you're, you're moving into that area, you know, that, that beautiful sweet spot as we call it where you've got that intersection between your zone of genius the thing that you love to do 
the thing that the market needs and wants and the thing that the market is willing to pay for, to invest in. So we need to find that sweet spot. If any one of those three pieces are missing, it's very difficult to build your business. But we also know that it's going to evolve further. You're getting into that period of flow now, but being open to the fact that when we talk again, let's say in 12 months, if we revisited what the services you were offering, what the style of your business is, I guarantee it would have evolved further because it's never static, is it? No, absolutely not. And I think you just, if you surrender to that process, um, recently I was introduced to that concept of staying in the process. Um, you know, so staying in the process of, you know, working one-on-one -on -one with clients for a, a period of time before you worry about that one-to-many business model. I don't know, we talked about that as well, Angela, but we just have to stay in the process and give it time and, and trust that we are on the right path. And in, in time, things Things do evolve and if you stay in the process it happens very naturally and organically um, I've found. And that's where that word trust comes in again doesn't it? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sarah, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you for opening and letting us know how your own support circle is, is um, constructed and the things that have influenced the decisions that you've made, some of those challenges that you've had to step through and that personal development that runs right alongside your business development. They're so entwined. We can't separate them. You know, where, where one thing is growing, it's usually connected to the other side of us as well. It's very hard to grow your business when you're feeling crap about what's happening on the other side so it's wonderful to see how those two have been entwining with yourself so if you can imagine a, a woman who's listening to this interview this conversation this episode right now and who's feeling you know maybe it's time for me to enhance or to build or to nurture or to expand my own support circle where do you think is like the most important place to start in terms of finding that sense of community is in that terms what you of mean? Overall, if you said, okay, I'm going to make one significant change to my support circle, I'm going to build a support circle, I'm building a business, but I need a support circle as well, what would you say is, is a piece that, or one or two pieces that you believe are most pivotal for you, that you'd advise um, other people to try? Well, one of the aspects which I think is really important is that uh, physical sense of networking, you know, finding yourself a... Um, a group that you can network with regularly and and over time. So not these one-off events that you um, attend. I, I run a, a Motivating Mum networking group and we meet monthly and I've often said it, it reminds me of my um, mother's group bunch of friends that I had when you have babies this must this networking group is like my mother's group for my business you know we've, we've come a long <laughs> way and I just think that physical um, connection of meeting people regularly each month has, has been a huge support to me in terms of um, my business and, and growing that my business and it's that face-to-face -face energy as well, isn't it? I think it's a sense. I mean, the online, social media, all the tools we have are fantastic. They are such door openers and can start connections. But I still, which is the reason why I love running the retreats and things like that, I still crave that face-to-face -face connection. Absolutely. And just that physical, giving someone a physical hug, you know, just that yeah. touch is so important. So certainly um, find yourself a local networking group that you can be part of. And I think too, that's the other aspect that so many of us are, are missing out on is connecting to our local community. Um, you know, because we live in a global world now with the internet and everything's online, we often, you know, don't realise what's at our doorstep. So like you said, being part of the local soccer team or, you know, really, fostering that local community is really important to me so you know find some business networking group you can that's local to you I think is a really good first start and then you know also too through local um, through Facebook groups you know you've got your, your next chapter Facebook group that's all connect to learn what your style is like and get to learn what you know I followed you online for two years before I even connected with you. So, you know, I think just being part of a Facebook group is a really lovely way to get a sense of community and, and a feel for um, the people that are in that community. So they're probably two great starts other than joining a mastermind, but they're two, two perfect ways to start building on your community and the support around you. Mm, that's wonderful advice and just, just touching on that concept of being beautifully stalked for a couple of years before... <laughs> 
we step forward is um, that that idea of that cycle. And I think this is really important for people to know overall as well as they're growing their businesses is that it takes time. I mean, that's that's the gist of what we've been talking about, and that's a perfect example of of you being in my environment for a while until you felt that resonance and felt that yeah, this is this is someone that I would like to work with. The values are aligned, etc. And so recognizing that you can't see that happening with somebody who could be becoming your client right now. Right now they'll be somewhere within that buying cycle, within their own journey. And so that's why it's so important for us to focus on nurturing and taking care of our communities until people are ready to step up and work work with us to utilize our services, purchase our products, whatever. We should never lose sight of the fact that everybody is on a journey. Just like just like we are, as we have been when we started, you know, way back in 2004 when you had your daughter and 2003 when um, I had mine. I had my son back in 99, last millennium. But mm. it's been a journey. You know, it's been a, a, long, a long path of evolution. And it's that, you mentioned it very well, that acceptance, that surrendering to the fact that it is a journey. It is an evolution. Things are going to change to keep that, that curiosity and that interest and that excitement. But consistently looking to that body barometer for the feedback on, am I heading in the right direction or do I need a little bit of course correction? That's what we've got to keep listening to, isn't it? Absolutely, definitely. And that's why relationship marketing is so important to me because at the yes. end of the day, we've got to build those relationships and it does does take time. You really, you just, you don't know and um, you, you've got to let go of the outcome and and just treat everybody equally and, and nurture those relationships equally over time and they will will come to you eventually. Mm, totally, and which which gives us the great opportunity now. If, I'm I'm sure that people would like to come and discover more about what your relationship marketing mentor is all about, the services that you do have that can help people connect more with their audiences and their clients in a way that feels wholehearted, that feels authentic, that feels aligned. So, where can we come and find you in this big wide online world, my darling? Uh, you can come and find me at yourrelationshipmarketingmentor.com is my website and uh, I also have a Facebook group which is called BC Shine. So that's where I teach a lot or I offer a lot of value in terms of um, sharing the things that I'm learning uh, in my marketing journey with you and, you know, we talk about latest tools and things that um that are available and how they can help you with your marketing and essentially be seen and shine out there in the world. Wonderful. Well, I'll make sure that we have those links on the show notes page and you'll be able to find those at angelaraspis.com forward slash 6464 so you can connect through and spend some time with Sarah like I've had the chance to today and obviously in the time that we've spent together in our next chapter of success circles over the last 18 months. So Sarah, thank you so much for being with us today and for opening the door on, on what's been happening in your world and for sharing your wisdom and insights as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Angela, and thank you. I am so grateful for the opportunity to be part of the uh, Your Next Chapter Circles. They really have made such a big impact on my business and life. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. And the beautiful thing about the circles is that you may receive a lot, but you also give a lot. It works in both directions. So you bring a beautiful energy to the circles. So thank you. Thanks. And you, my lovely listener, I hope that you have enjoyed um, politely eavesdropping on this conversation between Sarah and I. And I hope that this has inspired you with some other pieces that you can introduce into your own support circle. Again, we talked about those quadrants of physical, emotional and spiritual, community and connection and mentoring and mindset. So using that mind map that was available in episode 63, you can pop back to that one and you can download that completely free, no opt-in required, so that you can start evaluating other are there gaps in my own support circle? Are there things that I need to introduce that would take care of me more fully? Are there areas where I'm oversubscribed and I need to pull back a little bit? Only you know the recipe that works best for you. It's a trial and error. It's as Sarah has pointed out to us so succinctly today. It's the listening to your intuition because that inner guide lets you know when you're on or off course. So I'd love to hear how about how your circle, your support circle, I'm sorry, is progressing and what your creating as you are evolving in your own next chapter so thanks for your time today and i will be talking with you again very soon until then take care 
Thanks for listening to the Your Next Chapter podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please let me know. Pop over to AngelaRaspis.com to subscribe to the show and leave a review. And whilst you're there, you can also enjoy valuable free resources, including show notes and downloads, along with the Next Chapter community, where you can connect with other wholehearted women on the same journey as you. We'd love to welcome and support you as your next chapter unfolds. See you next time.